Hi everybody and welcome to my video here today. It is mid-May and I'm going to get my Dahlia tubers in the ground. This video is going to go follow our journey from planting all the way to um, cutting flowers and um, you, you're going to get to see the different varieties. Um, I'll tell you about bloom time. So in the past and in my last year's Dahlia video uh, from start to finish, I started my tubers indoors. This year, I wasn't on my game quite like I should have been, so we're starting them outdoors, and it's fine. Um, I probably won't have blooms quite as early, but I will still have blooms. The growing season is still plenty long, um, but we've got another situation. So, I was supposed to have a garage, a mudroom built onto my house, which was going to uh, increase my flower bed space. Uh, and let me show you that. So you see these beds here along the house. This is where I had my dahlias last year. Um, this entire bed. And then this bed over here does have some bulbs in it and uh, some weeds. <laughs> but um, this bed also had dahlias. And so the garage and the mudroom is going to have similar uh, lighting, daylight, sun, uh, kind of a semi-sheltered from the wind location because it was just going to continue on here, like where you see the gravel, mudroom, then garage, and it was going to go on and on. It's going, it's going to be a very long garage. Um, and so I was going to have a bed similar to this bed. So I bought some extra tubers of some varieties I wanted to try with the understanding that I was going to have these beds. Um, the garage was supposed to be started in April, but you know the world's a crazy place and it just hasn't happened. And I'm not really that worried about it. Uh, the only thing I'm really worried about is where I'm going to put my dahlias. Because <laughs> I bought them and I have them and I want to plant them. So... I have some perennials over here and some bulbs. Might stick one or two over here. I'm also thinking that over here, I had a shrub here last year that we eradicated. So I'm thinking maybe I could put a couple tubers over here in this open spot. I don't wanna to put too many because these are great vines and um, I like to have good air circulation there. So I don't want to smother that area, but maybe I could get three. Um, I might be able to tuck one back in there. Uh, this is a, like my most sheltered wind area. I might be able to tuck one or two up in here. I'm not sure. Now, I also have my front yard which is a lot windier um, and I, I think I'm gonna plant some out there as well I'm going to try to keep the taller varieties back here and um, I might even be planting some along my walkway but anyways enough of this jabbering about where am I gonna plant these dahlias um, and let's get to it so I've got all the things here I need. Here's my tubers uh, that I overwintered. Here's my order from Swan Island. Um, Swan Island sends these lovely little markers. I've got my own markers. Look, this was a thrift deal. This whole stack for $1.50 and the marker. How cool is that? Hammer to put the stakes in with, my gloves and shovel slug killer so i don't know if everybody has this problem but i do early on i have problems with snails not later so we will sprinkle that around to discourage them from nibbling on my tender shoots <laughs> um let me see i think that's it um two little pointers here pointer number one tip if you're interested. I would recommend that you put your stakes in with your tubers. 
um, then you don't have to worry about hitting tubers, you know, as they grow and develop, um, you know, when you put your stakes in. These are mine from last year. And do not use, second tip, do not use flimsy fiberglass or plastic stakes. Even wood isn't super, super recommended. recommended. Um, you need something strong because some of these get very heavy um, and you, you will need to tie them up. So here we are at my spot where I'm gonna put my tallest ones. We're gonna start with some of the Swan Island dahlias. And here I have Zoe Ray. And you can see the little eye there. It's even starting to grow some, some little roots. Okay, and Zoe Ray has a average height of five feet, so pretty tall. So I'm going to dig a little hole and plant this tuber about five inches in the ground, four to six they say. Um, I go for five around there um, and we're gonna plant it on its side like this with the eye pointing up um, now they're starting to form another little eye I don't know if you can see it it's a little white speck um, on this other side but I'm gonna put this large eye up so let's get our ground going here now if I was a good girl I would have some bone meal and I keep meaning to be a good girl and buying some bone meal, but I don't have any. And it's not the end of the world. Um, we'll fertilize them later. I'm just gonna dig a little hole here. Nothing super fancy. Just digging down. Now, at the time of planting, we're not gonna water. There, there's enough moisture in our soil here now, um, spring soil conditions nice and moist but if you live somewhere in a dry climate you might need to water uh, we will water regularly once they're above the ground let's put them down in there okay and we're gonna cover them back up now once they get going they really take off uh, okay so right there is my my hole. I'm going to start cutting my stake in. Right beside it. I can push it in the ground a ways. And then I'm going to, I'm going to hammer it. You want it nice and stable because, uh, take my word uh, of advice. It kind of stinks when your stakes come out of the ground and your plant falls over and it falls on another plant and it you know snaps the the ties that you know you you used and I would just recommend that so anyways there we go we've got one in we're gonna label it quick put the tag in I recommend you do that too because um, you may think you'll remember and you probably will remember once you have blooms but um, it's just a nice thing to do so right here, um, we have a dahlia from Swan Island. This is supposed to be Gitz Perfection, and I kind of brushed the mulch back a little bit, and there is nobody up. Now here, kind of hidden by my daffodils that are falling over, is an eccentric coming up. And then down yonder here, I have two that are up, a labyrinth, and another swan island, or a swan island. This is the smooches. But right here, I have pink petticoat and it is not up yet. And we have some friends over here coming up. You'll notice I've got some weeds. <laughs> I have volunteer grapevines right there. I have morning glory volunteers, which no morning glories have grown here for years. I eradicate them, but they have seeds like, I don't know, they just, those seeds last forever. So we have an Ivanetti. We have another Swan Island that is not up. Oh, 
don't know where it is. Oh, there it is. It's coming. Yay. Ova Joe. Okay. Over here. Now, remember those glorious tags? Do you see that that one has nothing on it? So, turns out that, turns out that um, the marker came off and I thought I need to use a Sharpie, not the one that came with it. So I went back through and wrote on them with the Sharpie. Well, I guess it depends how the sun hits and how the rain hits, but even the Sharpie does not stay. So probably why those tags were at a, you know, secondhand store <laughs> because they're worthless. Anywho, fortunately the handwritten tags were dahlias that I've had in the past and I do know which variety they are, but I will have to wait until it blooms because I do not recall. But over here we have three other swan islands that are up. I think this is Oh Honey. Here we have Santa Claus. Here we have Bee Man. And Zoe Ray back there is not up. No Zoe Ray. Sad. Virginia Creeper. We have some grass. So we got a puppy this spring. And this puppy will not let me work in my flower beds. As soon as I start to work in the flower beds. Oh, look at that. Look who showed up because I started talking. As soon as I start getting in my flower beds, he needs in the flower beds. Again, there's a tag with nothing on it, but that dog is doing fantastic right there. This one. Oh, another thing the puppy does. This is the dog here. Is he pulls the tags out with his teeth. He also digs when I work in the flower bed. So there's Foxy Lady back there. There's an unknown. So anyways, my flower beds are neglected. Another unknown. Here we have Daydreamer. That one is still visible. And over here, We've got an Arvanetti finally coming to the world. Right here. Yay. And over here. So, flower beds have not been. A Cafe LA. Super excited about that one. That's the young man. That's the young man. This is Samson. And um, he's a Labradoodle. Three parts poodle, one part lab. And I just gave him a haircut because he looks kind of ridiculous. So I need to work on my skills with that. It's eccentric. Nothing there yet. Excuse me. And then over here, uh, we have two from Swan Island that are up. One previous dahlia that I had that is up right there. And another eccentric here that is not up. So, yes, I see you. You are a good helper. Yes, you are. <laughs> so, we're getting ready to go on vacation, and I'm just going to observe again once we come back around uh, after vacation and see what's up. After that, I'm going to research the company Swan Island's policy about their dahlias. But while we're talking about this, so this year I planted my tubers directly in the ground. I sowed them right into the ground. In the past, I started them indoors and I am now favoring starting indoors. It really does give you quite the boost. Um, you know, having your plants start out much larger by the time you plant them outside. And um, you can keep closer tabs on them. There's no slugs inside. Of course, you want to treat for slugs once you bring them outside, but um, I think next year we will go back to that method as long as I don't lose track of time. <laughs> so we'll follow up again soon. So here we are back again. It is almost the end of June and almost all of my dahlias are up now. I, 
I just have one or two that aren't. Looky here, those naughty critters. Do you see them? Japanese beetles. Don't want them. <laughs> uh, this one is just coming up here. I'm off to a real slow start this year, but um, we are kind of picking up our pace now. About ready to strap this one here. I still don't have my Zoe Ray up. That's from Swan Island. Over here, we're doing well. This one was a late comer, but she's doing well. So they should start growing a little quicker now. We've had a lot of rain recently, so I haven't been watering. That's an Ivanetti right there in the center. Cafe Alley. And these are my, all of my backyard dahlias. Now this eccentric here in the end, I just saw it pushing through. Or at least, maybe that isn't it. Might have to wash that a little more. These are good. That one's good. Well, let me take you out around the front now. Now my flower beds just are not as pretty <laughs> as they have been in past years. My puppy is just, oh my, he's doing a number on plants. He thinks that the porch is his like jump pad. Um, so right here we have one. Gets perfection. Here we have one. This one is an eccentric. When this one, I've got to get the grass out of the around from it, away from it. That's pink petticoat. And this one, I don't know what is going on with this one. I believe it might have a disease. Um, so all of my Swan Island are up. This is smooches. All of my Swan Island are up except for one. And then this one is kind of questionable. I have treated it. So we will see what comes of that. Not sure. Um, and I also did read about my warranty and I need to actually dig up the tuber that does that did not come out. This one isn't doing great either. And I have sprayed it recently. I guess I better spray it again. Something is at it. So there you go. This is uh, the very last week of June. I'll bring you back in a couple more weeks and we'll see how things are going. So here we are back at that dahlia that was getting eaten. And I'm just gonna give it a nice squirt here with some seven. This is just the ready to use. I like to keep a little of this on hand for emergency type of situations. And I think I'm just gonna spray this one too. There's a little bit of bug damage. Um, and it's obviously struggling anyways, so. And it's always good to get the undersides of the leaves. Because a lot of times, that's where those little critters hang out. Okay, so I have some bloomers. Um, it is July 20th. They are a little late blooming for me this year, but 
I didn't start them inside. So right here um, is Santa Claus. Now this doll, yeah, still has a ways to open up, but I wanted to show it to you. It's very unique and pretty. I'm really enjoying it. Still no Zoe Ray, but Swan Island is going to send me a replacement next year on that one. And my other Dahlia that looks a little bizarre, they gave me some instructions to try. This, I'm loving this one. So pretty. It's a peachy on the outside and the yellow, yellow in the inside. It's beautiful. And this is Oh Honey. You can see that's a pretty tall variety, which is why I planted it in the back. And so those are new to me this year. And then a variety that is rejoining me is Foxy Lady. So I just went through this bed here and did some deadheading of the dahlias this year. And I thought it would be a good time to just bring you back and show you some blooms. Um, so on the end here, these two are Daydreamer. And I believe last year, I recall my blooms being pinker. However, these flowers, this particular type, uh, really varies a lot with soil type, just like they all do. Last time, last year, I had these planted in a different area, so the conditions were probably a little different. But anyways, a beautiful flower. And here we have Rip City. It just does not disappoint. Look at that. Gorgeous, gorgeous foxy lady. Very pretty. Um, now you'll notice here some zinnias mixed in. I had a bunch of volunteers and I just let them kind of pop up and mingle. Um, and I'm enjoying the effect. Uh, pleased with that. <laughs> Anyways, this is bride to be. And here, this beast goes way up tall, gets crazy, and it is wild and crazy. It's beautiful. Nice long stems on that one. This is lilac thyme. Now, lilac thyme was a huge tuber mass that I couldn't see any eyes on. I didn't see any pop, and I just took, took a gamble stuck it in the ground here and lo and behold I had a whole bunch of shoots so you see some over here and you see some over here so we're gonna have a huge tuber mass on that this year this is one of my new varieties this year as well and I am really liking this I've noticed that each flower is slightly different I did have some earlier that were less white anyways this is bee man Gorgeous, beautiful flower, love it. And Santa Claus, which I've showed you before. And these, these vary greatly. Now the white and pink is almost like muted together. Back behind we have Oh Honey, which is not disappointing. Gorgeous, semi-ball, beautiful, long stems very nice and cafe ole oh my goodness okay so i want to show you this because this is a perfect example this dahlia is known to kind of throw you for a loop people plan it for a color similar to this a taupey peachy pinky color and then it does all kinds of different things sometimes it's more lavender sometimes it's more pink sometimes it's more beige and look back here at this one same plant. Do you see that? Beautiful. They coordinate beautifully and they're just, they're gorgeous. Very reminiscent of Labyrinth. Very similar, uh, kind of related. Beautiful. Beautiful. Ivanetti also does not disappoint. Wonderful cut flowers semi-ball, 
or actually, maybe Ivanetti is a ball. I'm not sure, we'll have to look, but gorgeous. Okay, so over here I have two that are, two, three that are not doing so hot. Um, here's a spotted lantern fly. Do you have these in your area yet? A lot of controversy over if these are a problem or not. So make your own decision. <laughs> Anyways, this is a new variety for me this year. Fuzzy Wuzzy. And here I have a labyrinth coming. I love labyrinth. You see the reminiscence. Um, I have one here that hasn't bloomed yet. It's coming along. I do have another over here that did not bloom and one that did not come up at all. But um, I'm still hoping in on that one. And over here, I just have two more repeats. This area is not, apparently not favored with my dahlias. This is another Cafe LA over here. And over here, I have an Ivanetti that needs tied up quite desperately. Look at this magnificent beauty. This is Gitz Perfection. Huge. It's absolutely huge. Look, this is my hand. My hand is very large. <laughs> and we have some more coming here. Let's take you down. Got a couple more down here. This is eccentric. Um, these blooms are about spent. But a bright pink on that. And down here, another labyrinth that I'm going to deadhead, and a, a friend that has fallen over, pink petticoat. Now, I don't know if you recall me talking about this one. Swan Island told me to cut it off, give it Epsom salts, and see how it came back. Hello, Samson. Hello, honey. So, um, that's what we did. We, we do have some appropriately sized growth now. Previously, it was like miniature leaves, but I don't know. I don't know if it's going to amount to anything. Maybe I'll have some viable tubers. I'm not sure. Just not sure. And finally, we have Ova Joe. It is the 13th of September. I have some late comers, a little bug eaten, um, having a little bit of a grasshopper problem this time of year, but that's pretty normal. Uh, but anyways, beautiful. And over here, I don't think I've shown you this. My first bloom wasn't super fantastic. So this is fuzzy wuzzy, beautiful. And finally, this just opened it's still opening, as you can see. Beautiful. This is, I think, yes, Myrtle's Folly. So this location here, the dahlias aren't super loving it. Uh, it was just kind of a impulsive spot uh, because my garage wasn't finished yet where I planned on having more flower beds similar to my other dahlia beds. Um, Lambeth is doing a lot better than these other two, but it's not as close to a tree either. So anyways, I believe that's all we're going to have bloom for this year. Um, everybody, well, there is still one more coming along. Let me show you. You can see as we approach, this labyrinth is going wild. Loves this location. But look at this beauty. I do believe I videoed it earlier, but I think the blooms are just becoming more and more beautiful here as the season goes on. Hi, what are you doing? So that one is pink petticoat. Beautiful. And then this one. So we talked about this one. You guys need to come back around, please. We talked about this one. It was sickly 
and I called Swan Island, they gave me instructions. Uh, this is Smooches, and it is now thriving. Will I get blooms? I don't know. I have until frost, but and when is that? I don't know. It varies year to year. Um, maybe at the very least I'll get some tubers to try again next year. If I get a bloom, I will be surprised. I'm not really anticipating a bloom yet this year. So we shall see, but um, it is growing. So, all right for that. So this concludes this video. I hope you enjoyed. Um, this year I had a casualty. I lost my eccentrics. I had a couple of those planted. Uh, one was growing and the wind got it and just snapped it off. So I lost that one, but I am pleased with, with these others. And we will see how the tubers look, look come after frost. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out the other Dahlia videos and landscaping videos I have, and we'll chat again soon.